In this video, I'm going to show you how to do some new MIDI techniques. I want to show you how to create some effects and layers for your MIDI sounds so that they aren't just static or the stock sounds. Because you want to be able to create a unique sound for your music or your beats. The session I have up here is for some soundtrack music for a movie. Let me play just a little bit of it for you so you can get an idea of what we're doing. Okay, so that gives you just a quick idea. It's a uh, French horn that we're using to create a very eerie mood. And then some drums just to create a beat. Let's take a quick look here at the plugins that I'm using, which are Expand2, which comes with Pro Tools. So everybody should have this if you have a registered copy of Pro Tools. The French horn is the first track that I'm using. And... Uh, typically found under the brass instruments. So if we go to brass and woodwinds here, and then French horn. Let's go over to the drum module, which is Superior Drummer, made by TuneTrack. I've done this in some of my other videos. You can use Expand. They do have a drum module in there. Uh, I just prefer to use this one, uh, just because I can actually get a tom sound that I like. So, uh, you can hear there that I'm actually running that through some effects. So let's go ahead and solo up first just the French horn and listen to what that's doing. So we're running the French horn through three effects, a delay, a reverb, and then a second delay. PSP, and it's their Piano Verb 2. Uh, it's pretty basic, straightforward delay, or I mean reverb, as you can see right here. These settings mm, can be tweaked to what you want. I've got it pretty close to where I like it right now. Uh, the wet module, if you want to full send the full feed of the sound in there. Here, let's solo safe. So you do that by holding down Command and clicking on the solo button, it'll gray out. And then let's feed the full amount of the wet signal into it now. Let's just listen to just the reverb. Without the reverb. So it's giving it more space, which what reverbs do. Let's listen to the first delay, which is Echo Boy. Sound Toys is having a sale this month until February 29th, so I think you can get all their plugins for 50% off. So if you're interested in this one, it's quite useful. It's got a lot of nice parameters that you can tweak with. Let's take a look at what's going on here now with this one. I'm going to mute the reverb, so we're just going to listen to the dry signal and the effect. So just giving a little bit of a tail off. And I've synced this to the BPM of the session, which is 92 BPM. And currently we're at an eighth note. Now, if we want a little bit more tail, I'm gonna add and increase the feedback here. Let's play this. And let's also boost the mix all the way up for a full wet effect. Now, when I did that, I lost a lot of the presence. So actually these mix buttons or knobs or faders, whatever they are on your plugin, are very useful because you can blend the amount of the effect that you want layered on top of the dry signal. I had it somewhere right around here at 12 o'clock. Let's listen to that again. It's giving me a lot of punch and sustain that's still in the initial attack of the note with the decay of the feedback just bleeding out onto the end of the note. 
Now I've used the filters here to cut out some of the lows and the highs, really just to focus on some of the mid frequencies that I want to accentuate in the delay. So that's after the original note, the decay and sustain drops off. The echo that you're hearing is very mid-ranged. And I do that just so that it kind of gives it a more of a feel of it's distant, it's far away, or uh, the scene that we're going to be shooting with this movie is going to be a really foggy night right near some water. So uh, I wanted the foghorn sound of the fog and images and characters and creatures coming through the fog. So listen to it again. And with that in mind, envision what it is that you're working on. So I think I achieved that goal on that one. Let's listen to the third delay here, which is one from Waves. This is the H delay. Staple in my workflow. If you watch my other videos, you know that I love this delay. It's very useful. Uh, it's got most of the same parameters as the Echo Boy. It's got a filter, feedback, dry wet control output. Uh, this one actually has an analog modeler, which adds the analog hiss or sound of analog tape or machines into your system. Not a big fan of it because I want a really clean sound, so I usually turn this all the way off uh, unless for some reason the situation dictates that it needs some sound like that. I'm doing half note delays right here and I'm ping-ponging them, so let's listen just to the original sound in this delay now. So a longer decay on the delay, sustaining out, and the note just trailing off into the distance, ping-ponging back and forth. Let's put all three effects back in and listen to the French horn now. Now on the track itself, I actually do have a reverb, so I'm affecting the original sound with some reverb before it's going anywhere out dry. Uh, so let's turn this off and let's mute these and listen just to the French horn sound. So it cuts off, it's really sharp. And just as soon as the note, as soon as the MIDI note and sustain stops, it just drops off. And that's not what I wanted. I wanted tails and I wanted it to have a uh, very dark, feel to the sound of the music. So let's unsolo this. Let's put in the superior drummer. So if I solo this up, I also have superior drummer, but I'm also using the PSP Echo. So another plugin by PSP. This is a delay plugin that they have given a lot of extra parameters, which is really nice, like the drive and the level. Uh, the feedback for independent channels, which is really nice if you want to do mono stereo or if you just want to have feedback on one side of your spectrum. So whereas the plugin like the H delay, the feedback is universal to the plugin. So whatever comes in gets fed, fed back. Whereas this plugin here, you can actually control the level of feedback for each channel. You can also control the level, the drive. You have parameters for both channels, which is really, really nice. With this one here, I'm also using a lo-fi plugin, which is giving us some very slight, fuzzy, hissy, sizzly sound on top of the drums, which if you're very keen, with your ears, you can hear. And I can accentuate it. So I'm just giving this just a little touch of it, not too much. And then if you wanna decrease the sample size, you can get some fuzzy slapback effects on it. but I like it right about there. Blended with the French horn, they seem to be a good combination. If 
very War of the Worlds kind of sound, probably where I got the inspiration for this idea. But this is something that's easily created with MIDI, and if you take a look at the MIDI notes here, they are not very complex, just bouncing back and forth on the French horn, and then a constant sound on the drums. If we go back here, the actual echo is coming. So this is what it sounds like just with Superior Drummer. Very dry, kind of sounds like a drum in a studio or a garage or a living room, something like that. Very hard surfaced walls. I didn't like that sound. I wanted something more tribal outside. So I added the echo. Gives it more drama. It's more dynamic when you have the echo slapping off the other side of the spectrum. And then it wasn't the right tone, so I'm using the lo-fi to change the tone and quality of the sound. It's more timpani or taiko drum sounding now. A very big warrior type sounding drum, which is part of the idea behind the movie that we're doing the scene for. So it's really important to craft your music to fit the situation and you have all the tools right in front of you. It's just the combination. So it's always a good idea to experiment and use some of these plugins that you probably wouldn't normally use, like Lo-Fi, which I'm pretty sure a lot of my uh, students don't actually know what this plugin does. So it's a good idea to open it up and play with parameters and see what happens. Uh, the sample rate tends to be sort of like a filter. Watch as I move it down, it's only gonna be low frequencies that come through. as determined right here by where the hertz rate is at. Let's go back up to 6,000. The sample rate is just the depth quality of the sound. And as you get lower, it's gonna get fuzzier and... Let's go back. It's more alien with all the fuzz and slap. 13 seemed just right for what I was doing. And the anti-alias gives you a tone control. It makes it more metal pingy or more dark over on this side. So somewhere around 75, 76% is where I liked it. The noise is literally just that, noise. Kind of sounds like sprinklers to me. Never been a real big fan of this button. And then the saturation is just the emulation of saturation within the plugin. Definitely gives it a distorted, fuzzy sound. So I like just a touch of this, just up to the one. Gives the drums a little bit of bite, but not too much that it's annoying. They still sound like drums, they just have a really good bite. Maybe the uh, skin of the drum is a really fine stretched animal hide or something of that nature that uh, you would find in uh, Native American or tribal cultures. So here you go, just a quick one. Sorry it took so long to go through, probably do some edits on the way out of this one, but thanks for watching. I'm going to have some more videos up here shortly. Uh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff to share with you guys. I've been on a few trips. I just got back from NAM in January and have acquired some new ideas and new techniques that I'm happy to share with you. So stay tuned. Subscribe down below. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them. This is David at Shine On Studio in Oakland, California. Thanks for watching.